Do you want to improve your kicks? Well, today is your lucky day because I have three karate secrets that I want to share with you today that could improve your speed, balance, and power, no matter what kick you're doing and no matter what martial art you're practicing. Because after all, it's all about biomechanics and the human body doesn't care what you call your martial art as long as you can kick with speed, power, and balance. You ready? Check it out. Now the three points that I want to share with you today are taken straight from tradi- <laughs> Now the three points that I want to share with you today are taken straight from traditional karate. And what I love about traditional karate is that you're working with the wisdom accumulated through trial and error from generations of masters that have come before you. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel, right? Why not tap into the tradition and use what works and apply it today? Your link to the past is your bridge to the future, right? So the first thing that I want you to know is how to improve your speed in kicking. Now what most people focus on when they're kicking is the actual extension of the kick, right? But they never really focus on what happens before or after that extension, which is a contraction. In Japanese we call this kakayashi and hikiyashi. When you close the door, you fold your joints, the hip, the foot, and the knee. Then you open the door and then you close the door again, right? Now usually most people only focus on the extension, which means that their kicks are too sloppy and slow. They drop the kick after they kick and they telegraph the kick before they kick because they don't do the preparation and the ending properly, which means that you need to understand how to close your joints as fast as possible. And then all you do is straighten out your leg and then you close your joints again. And like I said, it doesn't matter what kick you're doing. You need to close, open and close and focus on the first and the last part. That joint contraction of closing the door before you kick and after you kick. And that is guaranteed to make your kicks faster. The extension should be more like an afterthought, not the emphasis. Now let's talk about balance. A lot of people have trouble with the balance, especially when they're kicking because half of your support is in the air, right? And that's understandable. But here's what you need to know. And I think that Sun Tzu, the old military general, Confucian wisdom master said it best. Great generals go to war and win the battle, but the best generals win the battle before they even go to war. And you need to do the same thing. You need to establish a foundation of good balance before you even attempt to kick. And the way you do that is by shifting your balance, transferring your weight to the supporting leg before you kick. That means that you're freeing up your kicking leg. Again, let me show it with a front kick. Instead of standing 50-50 or with my weight on my back leg, I would simply transfer my weight to the front leg, which frees up my back leg. Now it's easy to do any kick because my balance is already established. Balance shouldn't be something that you attempt to find. It should be something that you strive to create before you even kick. And you do that by transferring your weight. This whole idea of weight distribution management is actually the whole reason why we have different stances in karate too. But it's even more important when it comes to kicking because like I said, 50% of your surface of support is in the air. And if you don't know how to manage your balance in this position, you're gonna have a hard time. So make sure that you transfer your weight before you kick in any kick. Okay, so we've arrived at the last and third point to improve your kicks, which is power. Now you already know the secret to speed, which is to contract your joints before and after you kick. And now you also know balance, which is to transfer your weight before you even attempt to kick. And the third and last point for power is this. You need to drop and kick, not push yourself up and kick, 
which is a super common problem. As you transfer your weight before you kick, no matter what kick you're attempting, I want you to not push up, but drop down. Can you see how my weight goes down as I transfer the weight? This means that my supporting leg can now help with the power generation. And that is why this gives you more power, because instead of kicking with the kicking leg, you're actually kicking also with the supporting leg by pushing off of the ground. And you cannot do this if your weight is up here, because there's nothing to take from. So, next time you kick, no matter what kick you do, I want you to drop down slightly before you kick, which means that you can then use your glutes, your posterior chain, your pelvic activation, and boom, kick that kick away from the ground into the target. And that is how you get super powerful kicks, because now you're using your whole body, not just the leg. All right, so now that you've heard these three tips for improving your speed, balance, and power in your kicks, please leave a comment and let me know what you think about these traditional karate concepts. Because there are so many different philosophies hidden within the tradition. If you just search and dive deep down into the tradition, you can find these, uncover them, and apply them even to your modern techniques. And again, that's what I love about the tradition. Don't seek to follow in the footsteps of the old masters. Rather, seek what they sought and use their wisdom to your advantage today. Train hard, good luck, have fun.